Okay, guys, I'm so ridiculously excited about tonight's Zoom, especially before we even are going to conference. We are getting a special treat. Pam is on with us tonight, the queen of it works. A lot of you guys know her, follow her, love her. She is, has been for the last eight years, one of the most inspirational people for me in this business. So go to her Facebook page right now, make sure she's C first. You're gonna wanna see everything that she always shares is so powerful, you guys. But she um, is willing to pour into our team tonight. And so we're gonna do it question and answer style. Most of you guys submitted questions. So I kinda just dug through there, found some questions that I think she will have fun answering for all of us. So you guys blow up the chat. Be so excited that she's here with us. And do you just want me to throw questions at you, Pam? Yeah, yes, or, okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to waste any time since we no. have you. So, um, okay. So the first thing that I wanted to, wanted to start with, um, and this is really a question from me, to be honest. I'm going to be selfish and ask a question for myself first. Um, basically, just what keeps you going and keeps you excited? Because, like, obviously, you've been in the industry for a while. I've been doing this for eight years and I feel like I am still so new and still so excited, but you're still showing up. You're super successful. You don't have to be doing these Zooms. You don't have to be showing up for this company every single day, but you do. So where does that come from? Like, how do you keep like constantly fueling yourself to show up in the way that you do? Well, I, I just learned a long time ago, you know, I do a lot of studying and I think all of you know that I do a lot of reading. You know, when I don't feel like I'm creating, I, I just feel like I'm just here and, and I love being in the game. I just, in the game of life. And I feel like this is a big part of life for me. I feel very, um, very obsessed with bringing the wrap and the product to market because I feel like God gave the wrap to me and uh, I feel like I need to honor it and, and continue to bring it into the marketplace. So that is a responsibility, but I also enjoy it tremendously. I mean, when you, you know, you, do, you, everyone says, Oh, I'd love to change lives. And we all want to, but it's really, like you said, selfish asking the question. I feel selfish being here every day because it's feeding me, you know, it, it's feeding my soul. And I feel like this is what God wants me to be doing. And when I'm not, I, I just feel like I'm misplaced. So I, every day I just get up and I'm, I'm, I am, my gift is marketing. I mean, it is, it is, we all have, and it's, it's also a celebration. I love the gift of celebration. I love having a good time and I love the gift of hosting and that's just who I am. And I honor those tremendously. I mean, I can't play a musical instrument and heaven forbid you shouldn't hear me sing. Uh, my dancing is fun sometimes. And so, uh, an athletic, I, I, you know what, I can lift weight and look pretty good. So that's about it. So for me, uh, it's marketing. And so learning new ways to market, learning new ways to communicate. And I love this industry. This industry changed our family. I mean, it changed my family. Now my children, it'll change their children. And so I love the industry of network marketing. I just think it's still a relatively young industry. And one that people are just now starting to understand and recognize. And I think social media has given us a lot of help with that. But that's it. I just love it. Well, I will not join you on the dance floor and will also not ever sing with you or do any sort of duet. I am with you on that. So <laughs> I think this God gives us such a gift when you're walking in your purpose that he gives us the energy to continue to do that. And I yeah. think that's what I like seeing you. Like you're obviously walking in your purpose. So he fills you up every single day to be able to do what you do. And I think it's just so awesome. So, um, okay. This is one that you probably hear on every single zoom, but people need to hear it every single time. So we're going to go with it. Um, just time management in general, like, you know, so many of these people, they're new or maybe they're executive Ruby wanting to make those bigger paychecks, but they've got a spouse and kids and full-time jobs. And it's always one of the number one questions we get, like, how do you juggle it? And for lack of a better word, like the balance word, like how do yeah. you find 
balance. I love it. Somebody told me balance wasn't in the Bible. It just, we, we always need to be in flux. And I love that, you know? All right. So today I had a big day planned and it got derailed, you know, just uh, with something with my husband, I had to help him. And so I did. And I said, I'm just going to enjoy this. You know, I, I can't do these other things. It's just not going to happen. So I'm going to stay present with him. We're going to laugh about this and we're going to get this taken care of. Now, as a young mom, sometimes my children would be sick and I had all these things planned and I would be so disappointed. You know, I'm like, I just, ah, you just want to do the other thing. And I wish I could go back to those moments and just say, that can wait. They're right here. They need me. Now, I, I didn't not want to be with them, but I think we all get it get what I'm saying. So now as a Mimi, a grandmother a two, of a two and a four year old, I have so much more respect for all of you because I've been out of that for a while. It's hard. You know, it's tiring. And you, you know, they're, they, they don't stop asking. They don't stop. And you say no to them a hundred times and they come back. I, we need to be more persistent like that in our asking. And so I know what you moms are going through, but this is what I did. I'll never forget. Uh, a phone call came in. I just started networking and I'm pumped. My team is starting to grow and it's starting to really get big. And the kids had just left for school, just gone to the bus stop. Dave is sitting at the uh, breakfast table and the phone rings and I pick it up and it's Lisa. And Lisa's so excited. And I say, hey, oh my gosh, yeah. And I look over at Dave and the steam is starting to rise. And he's like, pounds his hands on the table. And I'm like, uh, Lisa, I have to go. And so I hung up the phone and I looked at him and he says, you don't give a blah, blah about us anymore. You just care about this business. And I'm like, oh my gosh what's, what's happening here. I mean, he just, cause he's never does this never. So I, I cautiously sat at the other end of the table and I said, all right, tell me what's going on. He said, you're on the phone all the time. You're so into this. You're so involved. And he, you know what? He was feeling like I didn't care about him anymore. And you know what? He was right. I was just over here having so much fun. Yeah, I care about you, but I hadn't had anything in my life that much fun in a long time because I was a stay-at-home mom. I couldn't wait to get up in the morning and take care of business. So I realized, okay, you've got to set parameters here. And that's what I did. I set hours for my business. So I told my team that I was not, they could not reach me until 11 a.m. And I went from 11 to 3, and then I had 9 to 11. And I stuck to it. Do you know I got more organized? I got even better responses from people because a lot of times moms will say, I don't want to be in your business. You work all the time. And you know what? They're right if that's all they see. So I started, I got up, I put the kids on the bus. I said goodbye to my husband. I went, I drank from my coffee red and went to work out and came home and got my house in order. And I did that, I mean, I had four hours, you know, seven to 11. That's a lot of time. I could do a lot. And then I sat down and I focused, I focused, focused, focused on my business. And in those four hours, I probably did more than most of you do in four days. And so that's the difference. You know, when we quit our job, suddenly we have all day. Less happens. We procrastinate. We go, I got tomorrow. I've got next Tuesday. You know, we wake up and we have this whole huge day. And then, then this is now, this is now the addiction. Scroll, scroll, scroll. It is costing you thousands of dollars wasting time on this phone, looking at what Alyssa's doing, looking at what somebody else is doing, judging, competing, uh, not working. And so that again, I didn't allow anybody to waste my time. 
I was not going to get on the phone and chit chat with you for an hour about the business, which you aren't working. So I learned who to work with, how to work with them. And I set my hours and I stuck to them and I got even more productive, even more income coming in. And I, I, I also recruited higher numbers because that's what other people wanted. It's up to you. If you're all over the place, if you're guilty, guilty, guilty all over the place, that is your responsibility. You are allowing that to happen. It's so good. Um, whew, that was good. Okay. So um, do you have, you know, kind of related to this, but is there like some sort of 80, 20 rule that you had for your income producing activities? Cause I think a lot of people get so caught up in the management or my team's growing and they start getting skewed of what they should be prioritizing to continue yeah. to grow their paycheck. You know, remember the managers we have at work and some of you are still working. Remember those, you know, those people, they manage you. You never really see them doing anything, but manage. And here they come poking on you, managing you. That's what a lot of you have become. See, we grow up understanding that we get a job and there's a manager. There's somebody managing us all the time. In school, it was a teacher and the teacher's manager was the principal. And the principal's manager was the superintendent of schools. So there's always a hierarchy. Well, we bring that into our it works business because that's all we know we've got to flip-flop this this is not the way we do network marketing it's totally upside down than the way you do corporate america so that if there one shift in this could totally transform your business because i want you to think multi-levels i want you to think duplication so if you are spending 80% of your time trying to push and pull and beg uh, your existing team and in there managing them, they are going to duplicate that down layer after layer after layer. So everyone's working 20% of the time on acquiring new business. That's why you're not going anywhere. In the beginning, when you started, what did you do? You spent a hundred percent of your time on new recruits. That's what you did. That's why you were rocking it out. That's why you promoted so quickly. And then you get there and you get complacent and you start, your ego comes in and says, but you need to manage all of these people. They need you. They could survive without you. They have to have you. No, stop it. It's not fun. You get worn out. You get burnt out. If somebody's saying to me, I'm burnt out. I had an executive say, my team is wearing me out. She's an executive. That's two people. Wait till you get to Ruby. You're going to just want to shoot yourself. I mean, really? It's that we have got to understand that if we're not flip-flopping this and spending 80% of our time on new people, and then the 20%, what do you do? You make videos for them. Alyssa, tonight, make a video. The video says how to start. All right, make sure you're on auto shipment. That's a two minute video. All right, the next video, gather four loyal customers, show them different ways to do it, how they do it, how they sign them up, what, you know, blah, blah, blah. Find your favorite products. Video number three, go Ruby. This, you've got to go Ruby. That's your first promotion. You're going to get $500 on average a month. This is where you want to be. Then, then after that, then they deserve your time. Then they deserve, and then question it. They're all asking the same question. There, here's my answer. It's in E-Suite. It's on one of Jade Hooper's 200 videos. Go watch her. I mean, really? It's out there. So we're spending our time and our energy and costing us thousands and thousands, if not ten thousands of dollars every single month doing the same thing over and over again. I, you know, I do not call my ambassador diamonds and ask them if they're motivated. Never hear me do that. Ever, ever. Anyone that does the business, I hate to say this to you leaders because you think you're so responsible and you think that it's my team. Why don't you give it up? It, it's, it's not 
just it's we don't own a team here it's not a team sport where you go and pay millions of dollars to own a team you know it, it, allow that to go away those thoughts and just say look we're all all of us should be spending 80 90 percent of our time recruiting that's that's going to grow this team faster than anything and all the questions are already there they're already answered let them go dig for them but when you look down in your downline and you see somebody that put in six customers or four distributors that's the target you go in and you pluck them and you say okay look I, you deserve my attention i'm I, I want to honor you here. Tell me what you're doing. Tell me where you want to go. That's the person I want to uh, work with. But we all know that whoever did it, they didn't need us. Maybe one or two times, but they flat out did it. Well, that's who I want. So if I'm spending my time in the 80% group of management, see, I'm putting out to the world that's who I have. And I get more of that. I want to put out to the world that 80% of, or 90% of my time is recruiting. I'm going to get more of those. I'm going to get more of those people. I'm going to get more of those recruiting people. And have you ever noticed that a team that uh, has a strong recruiting leader, that she has a lot of recruiting people? That's because that's what she does. That's who she attracts. Oh, that was good. I have never thought about duplication in that way. I mean, I know how important duplication is in this business, but I've never thought about it in the negative way of what we might be duplicating that's actually hurting our team and where we're spending our time is going to trickle down. And it makes sense thinking about some of the parts of my team that I have, why certain groups are, you know, so much management mode is because it's just trickling down from each person. So that was an aha moment. Okay. Um, and I very much this year, we put a lot of new systems in place for, for training new distributors, like little quick things for potential distributors to watch just to simplify the whole process. So people can spend more time on income producing activities, less time trying to figure it out. Like we've done a lot of the work for you. All you have to do is get the people, invite them, and then get them plugged in. And so obviously we know there's no perfect foolproof method method for getting people to work. But I'm just very much at the point in my business where I'm like, if someone won't take 20 minutes to watch an opportunity video, they're not going to find 20 minutes to work their business. If they're not willing to go through this little launch page we have, they're not my people. Like they've got to have something in them that's going to make them go. Well, especially in the beginning, they got to be hungry enough to watch. Yeah. You know, I, I, I remember one of the, in my first business, um, before finding this product, there was a girl that followed me around. She, I was working out and, and guess what? When you start like sticking to your schedule, you're going to meet more people at the gym than anywhere else. And they're highly motivated. So she said, what do you do? And I said, well, I, I'm at the, in a, she said, cause you're always having fun. I see you at the coffee shop and she would, I said, well, look, I'll, I have a video that'll explain everything. And this is when we had a VHS tape. Well, uh, by the time I get home, she's called me and asked me if I was still coming. And I said, yes, I, I'm just waiting for my daughter. And she said, Kay was in preschool. Then she said, well, bring her over. She can play with my daughter and we'll watch it together. And I'm like, oh, that's the first time that ever happened. I, you know what? She signed up. She was married to a doctor. She absolutely took her whole entire dining room and, and turned it into like a war room for, for the business. I didn't know this, but she wanted out of her marriage. He was not very kind to her at all. And this was January. On July, a, a moving truck moved up, moved everything out of her house into that, and she left. And I'm telling you, I would have never spotted her. I would have never... Uh, picked her out. She picked me out, but I was spending all my time at that time recruiting. And that's what I trained her. And that's what her whole team did. And that's why they blew up. And that's why she could do what she did. And so I learned through her. See, everyone else, I was trying to push and pull along. It's no fun. That is no fun. So I did set my parameters and on who I wanted and started interviewing them and started asking them bigger questions. 
Well, because I, my time and your time, all of your times are extremely valuable. That's really all we have. And that's really all we want is more time. I am actually have kind of been doing more of a hiring process when it becomes recruiting because I saw something the other day that said, you'll stop wasting people's time when you realize it's your time too. I'm like, that's so true. Why do we spend so much time trying to pull these people into the business that clearly just aren't coming? Like and maybe later and when it's their time, but you know, my time's too valuable to, to try to drag people in just so that they can not work, you know? Um, so, okay, let's move on to the next question because I could talk about that all day. Um, okay, so this person said, it seems in my case that the least supportive people are close friends and family. I feel like it should be the opposite. How do you deal with the jokes, mocking, and just lack of support from loved ones, but still stay, stay focused? Well, welcome to the world. Isn't that the saddest thing? But that is the truth because they are the closest to you. Here's the thing, they know you. They know you. You grew up with them. Have you ever done anything like this before? Probably not. Have you ever made a, a significant income? Probably not. Uh, have you messed up in your life? Probably so. And so this is what friends and family know. That's what they knew about me. You know, why is she doing this? What is wrong with her? Who abducted her as she as aliens come and taken her and then brought her back? I mean, I heard the most incredibly horrible things for years. I don't hear them anymore. Now I hear, we so admire you. We, we love your persistence and your consistency. And we, I mean, they honor me now. I mean, it's just crazy. But so this is normal. When a, a young person says, I want to be a rock star, and it's there, I want to be called Lady Gaga, do you not think that her whole family thought that she had flipped out, that she had lost her mind? The peers that she went to school with said, You're not pretty enough, blah, 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 blah. They all got it. Every, every person. I'm sure that uh, even the presidents, I mean, Lincoln, uh, one of the ones I studied the most, laughed at, uh, didn't win anything, never, you're never going to make it, almost flunked, I, I don't know how many times he flunked his law exam, and so, welcome to the world, it's not kind, you know, people just, especially when you start to step outside of them, then the heat really gets strong, no, they want to pull you back. Why aren't you going to the bar with me on Friday night? Everybody's hanging out. No, I'm working. Well, what happened to you? Everybody's meeting at the bar. We're all talking about how miserable we are. We want you to come and be miserable with us. No, I'm not going to be miserable anymore. Life, that's life. So you've got to be tough. That's it. I can't sugarcoat this. You, you, you know, I never argued with them. I just let them stay in there. I started looking, look at them, look at them saying that. What the heck do they know? They don't know anything. They, they haven't been to a meeting. They haven't been listening. They know nothing. They mock products that work. They mock a comp plan that pays. They mock a, 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 a billion dollar company. They're mocking that. Do they work for one? Excuse me? Yeah. Do they have a chance to make unlimited income? Hello. So what we, yeah, I can get really snotty on this because I, you know, they just don't know what we know. I, I had a woman have the audacity just last year, tell me that those things don't work. Highly educated. She was a judge on a Ted talk and I, I'm like, wow. This is really interesting. And I just looked at her and, and I felt sorry for her. I really did. I'm like, I, I would be so embarrassed to say that. And so over time, they do get embarrassed. Over time, they are going to apologize. But until then, you've got to get thick, thick skin. And here's the, here's the kicker. The longer you stay in and learn the skills 
and start making the money, the better for you. Don't quit because of them. That's the last, I, I, would, I would stay the course because of them. Yeah. It's so good. And I think a lot of the reason that people question the industry is because people get negativity. They quit because of it, which just proves those people right. And then it's just this cycle that keeps going. The only way to prove to these people is to stay the course and to believe yeah. in what you're doing. But, the, you know, they do it to, to kids that say they want to be a pro ball player. Yeah. I mean, that's that's an industry everybody loves, pro yeah. ball. But, oh, you, you're you not good enough. Mm -hmm. You'll never make that happen. I mean, they all have heard it. Olympics, are you kidding? You go, that'll never happen for you. Mm -hmm. So you can either do, that, that could either be fuel or it can be water. You'll drown in it or it will fire you up. You get to decide that. So, so, so true. Um, okay, so I'm just reading messages in the chat, but <laughs> everyone apparently is dealing with some haters. I think we have all, all, we all do. I still do to this day. It's nothing other than un un uneducated people. That's it. And you know what? I don't get into an argument with you mm -hmm. because I read a long time ago, um, Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And the first chapter, anytime you get an argument, they are, you're backing them up against the wall and they're going to get defensive and they're going to win. They're, they're going to want to win. They're going to want to fight you. It's like a bulldogs in a fight. So I just, hey, it's not taking the easy road out. It's just taking the smart one. Mm -hmm. Just walk away. Yeah. Well, and for don't, even say, don't even say you watch. Yeah, just no. leave it. The best thing is, is just look at them and make your move out. Yep, I totally Stop agree. Yeah, you're, you're missing the people that want it when you're spending time clearly with someone that doesn't. So it, again, it's just wasting their time and wasting your own. Um, okay, so moving on. Um, okay, so getting a little bit deeper, and I think this will kind of go for everyone, but can you talk about maybe just, for people that have been in for maybe a year or longer, just leaving the past in the past, or even just how people can overcome negative self-talk just in general. Mm -hmm. I think we have um, just a lot of people that are standing in their own way and they show up and, and these people, the people that I'm thinking of that come to mind, they are putting in the work. I would say they're even doing the personal development, but there's still something. And in my eyes, it's, it's something here that yeah. even with the personal development, it hasn't shifted. So like, do you have any, I don't, any advice for those people or even how to lead those people? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we all get to, to, to the place of where we're at because that's where we're at. Okay. It's an inside job. It's not anything on the outside because you've got a neighbor over here that surpassed you. Okay, so think about, all right, so she's already gone beyond. So in the same opportunity, same products, lives next door. Okay, it's got to be me. Yes, it is. So let's just, let's just get that out of the way. And, but not from a guilt, a blame, a belittling way. This is an opportunity for you to gain some wisdom. That's all this is. We're here on earth, I believe, to gain wisdom. So right now, you are at a place where it's, it's like you can't break through. It's like a plateau. It's like it, it's just, you're hitting a wall. It's, it's boring. It's uh, judgmental. It, it, you, you feel bad about yourself. It, it's just the worst place to possibly be. And so admit it. Number one, admit, I don't like it here. You know, I don't like anything about it. I know that I am beyond this, but I can't put my finger on it. So I'm going to give you some things that's really going to help. And I want you to just to think about how you think about your team. Just think about how you think about your team. Think about how you think about yourself. And, and then think about how you think about people outside of you as well, like other people on your team. 
and just get very clear on that. And you'll probably find that you've got some choice words in there that aren't good. They're almost like haters, these words, these thoughts. I mean, sometimes we're worse than the haters to ourselves when we look at the self-talk. There was a study that was just recently done. They took several groups, large amounts of people in several different countries and cities across the world to pray over the worst crime written cities and countries. And so this is a scientific study that they did. So they all start, now no one knew who was, like, I, if I was in one of the groups, I didn't know who the other group was or who they were praying for, okay? So you, I was in a group and I'm praying for this specific country. Another group was praying for this specific city. So you're in prayer. Where are you, where are you when you are in prayer? Are you in anger? No, you're in peace. You're, you're peace. You're peaceful. You're sitting there. You're feeling peaceful. And you're praying over this country to uh, praying that this country uh, is, uh, is a country of peace. How you want the country to be, not who they are, but that this country is, finds love amongst the country, that they find peace, that they find harmony, that they, they release all uh, aspects of war and the thoughts of war, that they're, they're actually, you can see them hugging each other. Well, this went out, all out at the same time. They then, as the scientists, they're looking at crime rates already starting to go down. Less rape less murders, less stealing, less everything. I mean, almost immediately it went down and stayed down for a while and then started to increase when the prayer stopped. Oh my gosh, I want you to think about this. Think about what you're saying over your business. Think about what you're saying over your business. Think about what you're saying over yourself. I can't get past this. I'm stuck here. I must not be any good. I, can't, I, I, I can't be a leader. I wouldn't be any good at that. Or my team sucks. They don't work. They don't bring anybody in. They don't recruit anybody. They don't get any customers. As soon as they come in, they go out. The, you, guess what? Guess what? that's going up in your business. That's going up. Those things are going up in your thoughts and in your business. So let's we can change this right here, right now. And guess what you're going to be able to do? You're going to be able to test it. Now, this has got to come from a place of sincerity. It's got to come from a place of heart, heartful message, sincerity that you truly want this for yourself and that you want this for your team. So I would, I would get in a quiet place. I would get, I would do it as soon as this is over, you know, just get very quiet. And when you pray, you pray as though it has already happened. You pray as though it, the, I mean, that's what Jesus taught us to walk in the faith that it has already happened. You don't pray from a place of begging or pleading. That, that's this, a dishonorable prayer. And so we come from a place of my team rocks. My team recruits more people because they love the products. They love the opportunity. They love to share. They love to give back. They, my team wants to earn more so they can give more. That's my team. That's who I am. Do you know who I am? I am the one that praise over my team. I pray over my family. I pray over my team. The, our team is the fastest growing team in Networks. They, they, uh, they, they're going to show up so big. I mean, at next conference, 
I mean, I might be going in with two people this year, but next year you watch out. I'm going to fill up one of those entire sides of the Amelie arena with my tea. And, and come from gratitude. And, and, and you can do this every day. Just takes minutes. Just takes minutes. If you would look, and I'll tell you one of the beautiful things you can do too, because when you take your, pen, your hand and you write, it helps an even deeper connection. So this prayer could be through writing in your journal, and then you can read over it. You don't have to keep begging. You don't have to keep asking. You can do this once, but when, but when you walk out of that, walk in the belief that that prayer took your team there because that's your form of advertisement to the world, not just to yourself, but to the world. So what is the world going to hear that you have a rocking team, that your team is making rank, that your team has got more money coming in than any other team? I want to be a part of that team. That's the team I want to be on. So your recruiting is going to go up. The, the dead people on your team are going to rise to that prayer and beyond. And I'm t I know that if you do this from all sincerity, that if you do this from a place of gratitude, appreciation, and heartfelt sincerity and love, that this is going to happen for you. And it can happen for you personally. You can do this over your children, over your family, over your haters. Think about if you did this over your haters, that my family just doesn't understand. My family would want more for me. My family would love it if I made this money because I could take them on trips. Yeah. What if we did it over our family, over anything that we want? If strangers can do this over the most God awful places with the worst crime rates, I think you can do this over your business. I think it would change it. And I think it would change it within minutes. So recently, I guess just since becoming a mom, I've been able to pinpoint those negative thoughts more often. Like I used to have, kind of have trouble listening and hearing those negative thoughts that maybe were just kind of going in year, one ear and out the other and didn't realize how much they were affecting me. But since becoming a mom, I've started to think more about those thoughts that I have for myself. And I'm like, I would never look at him and tell him, you know, there's no way you could do that. Or, you know, you're just not capable of doing that again or whatever it is. And I'm like, I would never say that to him. So why would I ever let that go through my head? And um, I said, I think it was in a book the other day, but it said, if you talk to people, if you talk to other people, the way you talk to yourself, would you have any friends? No. And I, you know, like, <laughs> and it's terrible. Well, and this is why every once in a while we'll go, oh, I sound like my mother. And then your mother would say, oh, I sound like my mother. Mm -hmm. And then your grandmother would say, oh, I sound like my mother. These are just passed down thoughts. That's all this is. And as a son that you have now, mm -hmm. would you want him hearing any of that coming out of your mouth? Mm -hmm. Because whatever he hears from this point to about the age of seven, mm -hmm. he is going to believe is true. And that's where we get the programming from. They say in vitro to about age seven, we're just a clean slate. And we're that, we're that way because we don't want to put our hands on the stove and get burnt over and over again. So we're learning, but we're also learning mannerisms. We're learning uh, ver verbiage. So if you, if you say, uh, if you say, oh, that was, you're stupid. That was stupid. They're going to think they're stupid. Mm -hmm. And so we just, you know, these are things that unfortunately we heard and we took in and we believed. So being aware of that, I mean, at your age, because it took me a lot longer to understand. Do you know, I even have said to people, you know, how you talk to yourself and they go, I don't talk to myself. And I'm like, that's really unconscious. Yeah. That's really an unconscious person. And so, wow, 
because they're not even aware that they're doing it. And who is that? Mm -hmm. That is just programs. That's all that is. And, and then you had somebody say, you're good at that. You're good at that. You believe that too. And guess what? You're good at that. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting too? Yep. So there's a lot of good in there too. So we, we want to be aware of that. It's just all not negative, but the negative is what it, the darkness until you turn on that light mm -hmm. and that light is awareness. That's what that light is. Until you shine the light on it, it's going to stay dark. And so that's why I always suggest everybody write down their thoughts for the next 42, 48 hours so that they can at least start becoming aware. And then you look at that and you go, that's not me. Mm -hmm. None of that's me. I'm not that person at all. Who is that person? That person's inside of me. That person thinks they're me, but that's not who I am. That is really a powerful activity. If you guys haven't done that before to sit down and write down your thoughts, because so many of us do just let them kind of fly off and we don't realize that we're, we're even telling ourselves those things. So you guys do that because you can't fix it if you don't know it's there. Yeah. And so part of it is having to pinpoint those thoughts. And, it's and, and that's keeping you stuck in those ranks too. Mm -hmm. Yep. All of those thoughts. But I'm telling, I hope that you all will do the exercise before that. And because th this is immediate, this will work on you and your team immediately. Mm -hmm. And I then watch your mom call and say, I'll support you. I'll be your customer. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Manifest it. Yeah. Um, well, I know we've almost maxed out um, our time. I'll, I'll just ask one little last question, but just one other thing that was so powerful to me a couple years ago at conference, you probably won't even remember it, but we were sitting in a room doing a Q and A like this and someone spoke up and just said, you know, my team's kind of falling apart. I, you know, I don't know if I'm a good leader. I don't know if I can sign people and help them be successful. She went through this whole long thing about everything she had been through in the business and you just looked her in the eyes and said you've got to stop telling yourself that story like it's because you keep telling yourself the same story over and over again like it's time to write a new story so you know i know we've got some newbies on here but we also have some people that i think needed to hear that so i just wanted to share because it's it's just stuck with me for so long um about what we're telling ourselves about what we've been through or what we can or can't accomplish and you, you remember too, how she was just sitting there mm -hmm. and that look, and it was like, and it was just coming. And I'm like, oh my gosh, how did she even get in the space? Mm -hmm. You know, it just, the, it was beyond sad. Mm -hmm. There was something, it was almost like she liked her story. Mm -hmm. You know, you could, it, and sometimes we do. Even if it's not a good one, we take ownership of it because it's, it's serving us in some way. You know, when I was home with the kids a lot, uh, Dr. Phil had just started coming on to the scene and I love his one line. What's your payoff to stay there? You're getting a payoff or you'd get out. See, a lot of times it's easier to stay stuck than to move on. So what's your payoff in stuckness? Oh, less work, less responsibility, less taxes. Yeah, Th think about it. We all have our reasons. And I, you know, I tell everybody, I hope you have to pay millions in taxes. That means yep. you're making multi-millions. I mean, get, let's get realistic here. Yep. And so you're getting, there's a payoff in everything that we do. And so I ask myself all the time, all right, Pam, what's your payoff in this? Because this isn't serving you. So there's something within you that you're using this because this is making you feel this way. And she was so wrapped up and, and owning that story as though it was the best story in the world. Mm -hmm. And she probably is still saying it. You know, I don't know if she, because if you're not ready to hear it, you're just not going to hear it. Yep. It's like what I said tonight, all of it. Some of you are just not ready. You're not ready to hear it. It's just like everyone wants to lose weight, but they're not willing to give up their French fries. Mm -hmm. And until you're willing to give those up and your donuts and your other cookies and your whatever, you're going to stay in the same weight. I mean, it's, 
you've got to decide that I'm going to go for the best possible food for my body. Mm -hmm. That's it. I'm just going to go, I'm going to eat vibrant foods. That's what I'm going to do. Foods that I know are going to look great on my body because if you eat a donut, you start looking like a donut. Yeah. You know, I, I remember I, I had, I had, uh, wanted to get out of being, um, I didn't want to take my senior year. I wanted to get out in 11th grade. The only thing I had to do was take senior English. So I took senior English in summer school so I could graduate and not go my senior year. And every day that during that six week period, I got a honey bun. And I'd never eaten a honey bun every day like that. I mean, my mother didn't buy that stuff. And, but I ate that and I started gaining weight. And I said to my mom, mom, my clothes are tight. I'd never been heavy a day. In my, I'd always been way, way underweight. And she said, well, well, what are you doing different? And I said, I don't think I, oh, mom, I'm eating a honey bun every day. She goes, well, stop. <laughs> and I, I stopped and the weight came off. And I, so I learned just through that one experience, <laughs> it's like, you know, put the fork down. So, it, you know, put the story down, mm -hmm. but put the story down, this bury the story, have a ceremony for it, you know, write it all out, put it in an ashtray and fire it up and then throw it in the toilet. I mean, get rid of the story, whatever. It's not true. Mm -hmm. It's just all made up. So make up a better one. If it's all made up, why don't we make up a big story, a really great story, a story about uh, how you prayed over your team and your team suddenly exploded. Man, I want to hear that. Do you know that thousands of people would come and sit in an auditorium to hear you say that? Mm -hmm. They would all come. I, I think the whole world needs to know this, but let's prove it first. Let's prove it. That's what I, th I hope that's our homework from here until we get to conference. I would be doing, I'd be on my knees every day, just doing that. We'll be saying all the prayers, but then also lighting our stories on fire and also writing down all our thoughts. I think yeah. those are all such good homework assignments for us. Okay. So just like a minute of what you're most excited about. We've got lots of people that have not been through this season before, or this is their first time with experience through this season. So just, I know you can't give us any special secrets, but just what are you excited about for, for 2020? Well, one thing that I, I, I just, I've been talking to everybody about too, is uh, our season is now this entire year. Yeah. Okay? 2020, the entire year we're changing the trajectory of the entire company this year for the next decade. So we're not going to have a season uh, that's smaller than 12 months. It's going to be rocking the entire year. So I'm most excited about that and everything that we have in place. Of course, we will go to conference uh, walking in and fly out. We know that. And we're going to rock your world the first 72 minutes of Friday. It's going to be insane. You're going to especially love it. And oh, yes. yes. <laughs> I mean, it's just, wow. It's, it blew me away, actually. I uh, just, I sat there for about five minutes to soak up what Mark presented to me. And I said, are you serious? We can actually do this. So I can't wait. I just can't wait. So I, I suggest that you all go there to absorb everything and to open up your heart to endless possibilities because that's what if you are uh, allowing this to take place within you then there's so much more for you when you come out mm -hmm. you know we could have had this whole zoom on how to get a customer how to host a post how to how to talk to a distributor you can learn all of that but if you're not on fire they don't care it, it the how is and really irrelevant. It fir first is you and how you, and where you want to go, who you want to be, and how you want the end, end of the year to play out. And all the components of that come together. All of them do. So m my goal would be, if I were in your shoes, is to just go in 
with a mind that says, I want to be blown away. A heart that says, I am ready. I am ready to receive. And I would, whoever you have always wanted to talk to, go up and, and compliment them. You know, don't ask them a question right away. Say, you inspire me. You inspire me because you're, you're going to be that next one that you inspire someone else. So treat them, know that they might be in line to go to the bathroom and they need to really go. So give them the space to do that, but, but compliment them and, uh, and know that they've given back to you because one day you can be in their shoes. And I say, just talk to everybody. Just make new friends from all over the world. If you see somebody sitting by themselves, say, come on, join our group. Join our group. They might be, we've got a, a several hundred French people coming. They can't wait to be in the United States. They can't wait to be around all of us. And, and so we'll have, Mexico will be there. They're going to be insane for this. So whoever it is, just be kind, be open, be friendly, give back and, and invite in because there's a lot of people that are going by themselves and, and they feel lonely and we've all been there. Yeah. I, I remember going to meetings by myself and just sitting there and wishing somebody would talk to me because sometimes we're just too shy to do it on our own and wear your black, green and bling. Show up, show up big time. We've got, a good, we've got a good group going, and this is my eighth conference, so <laughs> which is crazy to say that. So I'm just as excited about this one as I have been for every other one. You guys always blow it out of the water, so I am just so excited. I love hearing you talk about the entire year being a new season because you guys, everything you've ever said every year, any year about changing the graph, like it's always happened, so... I just trust the process and I know that we're going to kill it. And I'm so thankful for you sharing your time tonight and just all of your knowledge. And we'll see you at conference. Our team's ready to rock it. Yes. <laughs> hey, we all pulled right. it off tonight. I love it. <laughs> Good <laughs> night, everyone. Thank you.